out from the Dallas Marathon. October was my best training month ever. I averaged about 120 miles per week with a couple of good workouts and a hard long run every week. We came off of that and we ran the New York City Marathon. I had a 232 there, felt really good. I'm not going to go into all the details of the training that I did, but if you want to look below, it's in the description. I've got my training spreadsheet, Strava, everything's there. In this video, I've got two segments planned. Number one, I filmed before the marathon. Uh, it was the last of those 120 mile weeks. I had a day where I did an easy run in the morning and a workout at night, and I just decided to film everything along the way. You know, getting up, morning run, walk the dog, what I had for breakfast, continue on until bedtime. So. Just kind of a look at a typical day when you're running high mileage and what you gotta eat to do that. And then the next segment is gonna be a New York City Marathon race report. Wednesday, October 25th, and today we're going to look at what my regular training day looks like. I was up at 6.15 getting my coffee ready this morning, about to walk the dog. We're going to do a double today, maybe six easy in the morning, and then I'm going to hit the track for some 800s tonight. If I think of anything else interesting, I'll let you know along the way. Here, bud.
pulled up to the Plano West track and we're gonna do 15 by 800 tonight. Warm up with three or four miles easy and the rest between the reps will be about 100 meter walk, 100 meter jog, so 90 seconds, give or take. Goal pace is 230, 235, so around five minutes per mile to 510 per mile. And total volume for the day should be around 12 or 13 tonight plus six in the morning. and it's the end of a pretty typical workout day. Got in 19.6 miles total. The workout was 16 by 800, ended up averaging right around 236. So, gonna walk the dog, hop in the hot tub, and drink my wine, and then head off to bed. Should be lights out about 10 o'clock and up again tomorrow at 6.15 if my dog will let me. He's cool. All right, so first things first. When you talk about races, you've gotta talk about goals. My goal was to walk away from the race without having to take two weeks off before Dallas. The main way I wanted to do that was a negative split. I wanted to go out at about 6.10 pace and then just cut about five seconds per mile every 5K. So hopefully by the time we got to Central Park, I'd be running 5.30s. I think that comes out to 235 something for the marathon. So 235 was my goal. So nutrition wise, I know this is something a lot of people are interested in. I woke up at around 4, 4.30 in the morning, got dressed right away. Starbucks was open at five luckily. And this is for a 9.50 a.m. race start. So I had oatmeal about four and a half hours beforehand. I had a banana at that same time. Started drinking coffee. I probably had three coffees before the race. I don't take it easy on coffee. I go hog wild. After that, we got on the bus to go to the Ocean Breeze track facility. That's where the sub elites got to hang out before the race, across the way from Meb and Shalane. Um, there they had more coffee, bread rolls, bananas, Gatorade, and I had all of that. I wouldn't normally do the bread, but with the 10 a.m. race start and just sitting around so much, I was starting to get hungry. And I actually think the bread was a good idea, so I'll probably do that again before Dallas. These were just some really thick rolls. I don't know exactly what else to call them. Um, and then right before the start of the race, I had my own Gatorade that I mixed in the hotel room. I 
make it like double concentration. A lot of times I'll carry that for the first 5k of the race, but we had enough time that I drank it before we started. Uh, Goose on the course, I took four with me. 5k, 10k, 20k, 25k, I think. And then luckily they were handing out more along the course, so I picked up two more. So six goos. And each of those goos I kind of split into two. I never take goos on a difficult portion of the course. I'll try and do it like on a downhill or flat. Uh, pop it open, eat half of it, and then I run about a half mile before I get the other half down. Just so that it's not all in your stomach at once. I had some Gatorade on the course, probably like five little sips but I, I can never get much down from those cups and I didn't touch any of the water. So the starting line goes off and here are my splits. As I said I wanted to take it easy for the first 10 miles so 620 up the Verrazano Narrows Bridge uh, actually is a little bit faster than what I had planned for 5.45 on the way back down is way faster than I had planned for. But both of these paces were really easy and you just kind of naturally settle in with the group. So it doesn't really matter what I had planned to run at that point, I'm running with people. And it's always easier to run with people than to go out on your own or slow down and let them pass you and then catch back up later. And so I was just cruising. I was cruising with a group that was running right around six flat and Everything was in control, so I stuck with it for about 10 miles. Now, at mile 10, it probably wasn't the same people that I started with, but you know, you go along, you swallow up people, people drop off. We didn't have too many people going up off the front. I kind of stayed near the front of this group and I was pushing the pace maybe a little bit. Um, but that was all of Brooklyn and most of Queens. So when we got to the Queensboro Bridge, is where it starts to get interesting to me. At this point, I knew that it was gonna be a good race because my breathing was good. I had a 3-3 a three, three step pattern, three breaths per, or three steps per breath in, three steps per breath out. Normally I try to hold that for like the first half of a marathon and then 2-2 two, two thereafter. Um, but here, you know, it was past the halfway point we were going uphill and I was still breathing that pattern. I didn't even have to push, you know, holding 550 uphill. So I knew it was gonna be a good day at that point. I was passing a lot of people on the Queensboro Bridge and I ended up going really fast down the bridge, maybe around 520 pace. It was just perfect, you know, cruising, weather, um, elevation, everything. So we hit First Avenue, mile 16, and I saw my wife and her friend there. And that's when I kind of had to chill out a little bit because as everyone will tell you in New York, First Avenue really pumps you up. And if you don't force yourself to calm down, you're just gonna waste all your energy at that point. And then it's gonna be a tough run through Central Park. So once we get through First Avenue, we're running through Manhattan quick stop in the Bronx, then back in Manhattan. Those miles were just picking people off, uh, trying to hit around 540 pace. I had done 550s, I think, from mile 10 through, well, let's look. I had tried to average 550s after about mile 10. You can see it's a little bit spotty here. So six flat, 540, 552, 542. I don't know how accurate these are. I don't really uh, look at mile splits. I hit the lap button on my watch every 5K and I look at the clock as I'm going by just to make sure that my total time is, uh, is on pace. And so, you know, I don't know if I was running back and forth between 540 and six minutes per mile, but it would really surprise me if I were. I think it was probably more of a consistent 550 and then Kind of as we get past mile 16, it was closer to a consistent 540. Um, I didn't notice too many rollers. People talk about how hilly New York City is, and I'll give them that. It's a very difficult course, uh, maybe among the most difficult that I've run. But that difficulty comes in the 
three hills. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge to start, the Queensboro Bridge, and then the hill in Central Park. Now that was, I'm kind of skipping ahead here a little bit. Um, mile 24 here. What I expected from Central Park was rolling hills. I've run through Central Park a few times before, and that's kind of what it was. Nothing too big, but there's no flat ground in Central Park. The race really surprised me because this was just a mile straight up. And then after that, mile 25 and 26 were actually pretty easy. Um, but 24 was the first point where my legs started to kind of fight back against me a little bit. But luckily, just because I had conserved so much energy early on in the race, I was able to kind of push through it and force the pace. That's where my heart rate really started to take off. Um, as you can see, I'll talk about my heart rate here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so enough energy was conserved that I was able to push it up that hill in Central Park. And then I actually closed really well, 536, 526 for the last two miles. Uh, just barely got under 233, so I got my second fastest marathon time ever. Really happy with that. So back to the heart rate, which you can't totally see because the webcam's in the way. There you go. A little bit better. When I do my long runs here, I can get up to 20 miles at like a six flat pace. And for those runs, my heart rate is around... 140 to start, 145 in the middle, and 150 at the end. If I go up a killer hill, it'll be 155. So my heart rate in the race here really surprised me. I was looking at it closely for the first 10 miles, and then I just realized it was going to be so unreliable that I stopped looking at it. I turned my watch off that screen and never looked back. I think part of that is race day just energy, and part of that is that in training, you're never going to be able to push yourself as hard as you can in a race. But I was really surprised to see, you know, for the last 10K, I'm in the 160s. I even got up to like 170. 170 is basically my 5K heart rate. So having a 170 heart rate in the last 5K of a marathon is a little bit surprising. Now, I don't know all the physiology behind that. I'm not going to try to explain it. But for me, I'm just not going to try and use heart rate to pace myself in a marathon again. It just didn't work out. Uh, I'll say that since I was trying to take it really easy, it did help me take it really easy for the first 10 miles. It was high enough that it had me concerned, even though I really had no reason to be concerned. And it's a big reason why I split kind of just under 118 for the first half and just under 115 for the second half. First half I'm watching my heart rate, second half I'm not. I can't say enough good things about the race, the course, the support. Um, everything about the New York City Marathon was what you would expect from a world marathon major. So if you get the chance to go out there and do it, go for it for sure. So up next for me, I've got Two more hard weeks of training for the Dallas Marathon, and then I'll be tapering, get a, a full good taper in. Hopefully, I can start out at 540 per mile when I finally get to race day. After Dallas, we're doing the Houston half in January, the Tokyo Marathon in February to close out the World Marathon Majors, and then I am going back to Boston and Chicago this year to hopefully improve on those times. So that's it for today, guys. If you have any questions, comments, you can email me, tweet me, find me on Reddit, or comment below. Let me know what you think.